They're going ballistic in the crowd. I am so excited about this. It is an honor. I am it's so truly excited. an honor and a pleasure to introduce our first guest today. It's been 40 years since this guy first set foot on the stage of a Las Vegas nightclub. Known to millions as the Merchant of Venom. <laughs> The King of Zing. Yes. Would you please welcome Don Rickles? Feeling us. <laughs> High school rally is. It is. It's, it's kind of like. <clears throat> oh. John? Before we get going. How about Valium for all of you? Valium. <laughs> <clears throat> Would you like to try my grilled cheese sandwich? No, thank you. I, I don't know where you look. I, I, I don't. You don't think so? <laughs> I, I can wrap it up for you, save it after the show. Anyway. Things aren't going that badly. Okay. <laughs> Don, you are an American icon. I mean, you truly are an icon. What do you think, what is the secret of Don Rickles' success? Well, just hanging around a wife and giving her whatever she wants. <laughs> but, uh... Good but, but to be honest, you know, I think with all young people, if you're different, you know, I, I've always, it's a hard road when, you, when you're different, and I've always been different when I started out in comedy, and so that's, that's what how, the story... How you, when you say different, you mean... Well, you know, making fun of people and being aggressive and being sarcastic and never really having, uh, what you say, a joke teller. I mean, uh, looking at this crowd, I don't need a joke. To... <laughs> <laughs> what, what is wrong with you? <laughs> anyway, so... But see, you can get away with all that stuff. I don't think well, there's anybody else in the business that can get away with it like you can. Well, unless they have a lot of Blue Cross and a fast bike, you know. But, uh... <laughs> But it, it's, 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 a, it's an art. It's, it was part of my personality. It's not something I rehearsed or mm -hmm. tried to do. It, was, it always happened. Do you, you, know? like, you like sarcasm? I <laughs> love sarcasm. <Yeah. laughs> you sarcastic? You, you both came from Utah, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing, on, nothing on Utah now. Nothing on Utah. Oh, yeah, do Larry it. Larry King just married a, a Mormon lady. Yes, I, he yeah. did. I just left him with a couple of seagulls on his shoulder and a big black hat. <laughs> But, uh, no, I, 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 I someday dream of playing your hometown and watch a guy with a rifle going, eh, there he is, Charlie. <laughs> you, you played Utah. No, only to suck salt. <laughs> but, uh, uh, not, not on the books at the moment, Utah. Not on the books. Uh, Saturday, night, Saturday night in Utah is usually, look at that, Al, a bus. <laughs> Vegas. You are Mr. Vegas. Well, I don't know if I'm Mr. Vegas, but you I've are. played it for, as you said, almost 40 years, and it's been great to me. That's what I, that's what my, that's what my parents said when I was there. Wow. <laughs> wow. But, uh, it's a great, it's, as you both know, you both played there. It's a, it's a great town. But it's, it's changed a lot over the years. Well, yeah, in my day, it was a lot of guys that when I first went there and I said, uh, sir, your, your suit, you look ridiculous. And the guy went, how would you like it if I step on your hand? <laughs> And then I realized that, you know, his suit wasn't stupid. Right, right, right. Because the next thing you know, my wife and I were in a closet on a hook. <laughs> but is, that, no, is that like the most you've been heckled, or...? No, you, I was never heckled. I was very fortunate. In my beginnings, you know, when I worked in saloons, when, right after the war, when they were sailors, and I wanted to see the, the nude girls, and so... But nude girls, by the standards then, if a girl, you know, they wore tops, but... Sure, was, that was considered... But, yeah, but with that. fans, and so it was supposed to be wild. So mm -hmm. there was like... One comedian and constant girls on the runway dancing, and I was the humor, and I was uh, 38 years old and single. I had a lot of problems. And uh, I, I used to go behind the fan and go, ah. but uh, <laughs> don't, don't make me show slides. Don't, please. We've got him. <laughs> you said... You said you were single, but... You were you've 38 been... and single? Yeah, why, well, you heard about it? <laughs> Everybody yes, I was. did, John. I, I was, and, I, and that was unheard of. You know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a young man when I got married, and I've been married 34 years to a lovely woman. Yeah. That's great. 
Why do you applaud? You never saw her. Anyway, uh, see, that joke could cost me. That could that cost could me. Cut, that could cost me. Do you, so, do you ever insult your wife? Does she have a good sense of humor? Huh? I mean, does she have a good sense of humor about... <laughs> well, when you sign the checks like I do, she laughs her, you know what all. <laughs> you know, when you do this... How do you, how do you celebrate, uh, what is it, 34 years? How do you celebrate yeah, 34 do, years? Do you, what, what did what you do? Take, in... take a wild guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually... <laughs> see you. After 34 years? Never too old for that, Tony. Okay, Never right, old. Right. Someday... Glad to, have, glad to know that. Someday you'll be my age. But when you're Jewish, you circle the bed and get an estimate. <laughs> I think everybody just passed out over there. <laughs> Dick, oh, Dick Clark's still funny. breathing. Okay. <laughs> where, where did the, uh, the famous line that you, you made famous, the hockey puck, where did that come I from? I have no idea. I really don't know how that started. Years ago, they tell me that when I was working in, in, for the lack of another word, joints and tough places, uh, for the lack of a put-down word to a guy that was maybe getting on my case a little bit, I'd say, you're a real hockey puck. But I don't really recall the one time the one it really time. started. But it seems that it, it developed in New York. Whenever I'm in New York and I walk down the street, I'm, I'm very approachable. And most guys go, hey, what do you say, hockey puck? And the crowd that follows me is, you know, the real class, you know, like, yeah. hey, hey, some of this hockey puck. <laughs> How's your mother and your father? Hey. <laughs> well, Don, we, uh, we have a little, uh, little I'm surprise. I'm sorry. For I love him. I know. We have, I love your humor. Why do you apologize? Wow. So I, I would imagine, I would imagine, since you made that famous, you've got a lot of hockey pucks that are, are laying around your house, right? A lot of yes, people I give do. you hockey pucks? Pardon me? A lot of people give you hockey pucks? Yes. Why do you ask me these dumb questions? Well, it's, it's, <laughs> because. Because oh, I I, hockey. You think that's on my mind? Because I get up in the morning no, wait, and say, wait. you got a hockey puck. <laughs> Show. Never well, wanted to well, be Well, Don, it's going to get dumber. <laughs> I would, would like to present to you a Donnie and Marie hockey puck. Uh. said to me when Governor Reagan or Reagan, whatever they call you, Reagan, I don't care. What do I care what they call you? You're the governor, and if I got a cousin getting the chair, you better make that phone call. Roasting people. Well, uh, no, so at that, good at it. Well, at that time I did. I mean, uh, I owe so much to uh, Dean Martin, rest his soul, and Greg Garrison. Uh, those two guys made it possible for me to become very successful on the roast. And then Frank Sinatra, who was a great friend, and we lost him. But Frank always used to say, "You'll you go on and pick on Dean." And whenever I said to Frank, "No, my my hand got funny," <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so I never. Uh, I always was on those shows, but. Uh, I, at that time, it was really great. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it was fun to do. Fun. By the way, congratulations on, I, I think his name is Ethan, your little your grandson. grandson. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you, must be, you must be a great grandpa. Do you spoil Ethan? Well, he's only uh, three months, four months old now, you know, and I lay on the floor, and with my back, I can't get up, you know, so uh, <laughs> he just uh, slobbers all over me, and I go, Gucci, Gucci, go, that's a $300 coat, you. <laughs> Anyway, but uh, he's adorable, and I'm very happy for my daughter. Is it fun to be a grandpa? Well, yeah, you know, I mean, for us. They say it's great you spoil them and give them back. And well, you know, we're, we're so new at it. You know, I'm, I'm a rookie at it, and at 70 some odd years of age, you know, to have a grandchild, my first, you know, it's, it's kind of nice because I can see it now when he's ready to get married, and I'm sitting there with a blanket going, Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> Ethan, Ethan. Grand, grand, <coughs> grandpa's here. <laughs> <laughs> a few minutes ago, or just a second ago, you mentioned uh, uh, Frank Sinatra. Yeah. You've worked with so many great people yeah. over the years. Yeah. I'm just going to throw out a couple names and, yeah. and get your reaction. Frank Sinatra being the first one. Uh, style and the, one of the best. Yeah. The best of best. What can I say about uh, Mr. Sinatra? Frank was a, was a great friend to me, and he had a charisma that, to this day, I don't think anybody, including presidents, when he walked into a room, it stopped. 
He had a magic about him that was, really was fantastic. Yeah. And, of course, a great boy. Yeah. What about, uh, what about uh, Dean Martin? Dean Martin was the most lovable man in the, in, in the world. I, I think if uh, God said you weren't going to be an actor, he, uh, it, it wouldn't have bothered him. He, he got success, uh, but he never really... He was a complete a guy that liked to live a very quiet life, and he was very lovable. Dean, and, really? Oh, yeah. He, the limelight was not his cup of tea, even though Martin and Lewis in those days, they waved. But Dean, if you got to know him, was the kind of guy that play golf and play it, play it down and not be a guy that... Well, what, what, about, what about someone like um, uh, Dick Clark? Dick Clark's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, sometimes you've got to be sweet and sometimes... <laughs> He's having his face over there. You just ran into Dick. No, I, I met Dick. I, I know Dick well. I know Dick a lot of years. I knew Dick when he, Frankie Avalon was his son, you know. <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> by, the, by one of the marriages. Yeah, it's a long story. <laughs> And every time I, I meet Dick, I say, Dick, how are you? And he goes, how do I look? How do I do? I look good? You know, you got to give him a toy. He thinks he's 12. You know, right, exactly. <laughs> well, he looks 12. You know, he t tells me he knows all the biggies, you know. What, yeah. what about, what about uh, Robert De Niro? Robert De Niro's great. If you, I did a movie with him, uh, uh, Casino. 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 Great movie. And, uh... And in the movie, I thought I was Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray, to you younger people, you might not know, was a singer, a great singer that had a hearing problem. Uh, he had a bad ear, but he was a great singer, Johnny Ray. And I had that problem with De Niro because we'd do a scene, I'd go, roll him, and he'd go, I'd go, the men are tired. What are we gonna do, boss? And he'd go, <laughs> And like a moron, all you saw was me going, huh? <laughs> the whole movie, I thought my, my can locked, huh? Method acting. Method acting. But Bob is a great guy. He's got a great sense of humor and a class man. He's, yeah. he's, he's he great. seems like, I've never met him, but he seems well, like he very... Well, don't worry, you're not going to. Okay. <laughs> you're not even on the standby list. Trust me. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> I can see now. Bob, Donnie and Marie. Where, 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 where are Donnie and Marie? Where, where am I going with Donnie and Marie? Where is Donnie and Marie? Bob, come do our show. We'll prove him wrong. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Actually, yeah, wait. We have some... Um, Question from some of the audience members that we got during the commercial break. Brooke, where are you? Brooke? Brooke, uh, you're from uh, Glendale, right? Brooke wants to know, what was it like playing Mr. Potato Head in Toy Story? It was so, you did such a great job in there. Well, you build a whole career and you wind up a toy on the floor, but... Uh... <laughs> It, it was fun because uh, John Lasseter is a great director and he did the original Toy Story and we're in the midst of doing Toy Story 2 now and, it, and uh, it, was, it was fun doing, especially to be able to say hello to Tom Hanks, that was my dream. Yeah. <laughs> Just hello. You, hello no Tom association and, at and all. Tim Allen, hello Tim as their car rolled over my foot. I <laughs> no, they're good guys. Actually, do we have time for one more, one more quick question? Yes. One more. one more quick question. Tennille. Tennille. Where's Tennille from Long Beach? Yeah. What is one thing you think people would be surprised to learn about you? That I really live a very uh, normal, family-oriented life, which I do. I, oh, that's wonderful. My, my wife and I, uh, as I, as I was telling you during commercial break, uh, after 34 years, we took a trip to South America where we ran into uh, Dick Clark and his wife, his wonderful wife, Carrie, and they yeah, were... Yeah, love Carrie. Carrie. Yeah, they were, they were having dinner with the Perone family. And, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I said to Dick, do you, did you know Juan? Very well, very well. And, uh, in fact, he was on bandstand with me once. Everybody was on bandstand. Yeah. Avita was on bandstand. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, you're, you're very thank you. wonderful thank young you. people, and I wish you the very best with the show and good things. Thank we you, want sir. to remind everybody that Don Rickles will be at the Desert Inn in Las Vegas, April 22nd through the 25th, and the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, in Atlantic City April 29th through May 2nd. Thank you. We'll be right back right after this.